Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is ITX Design Studio Toolbox. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Arm yourself with the tools to make ITX design life easier. In this demonstration, I show you how to add a new menu option to the right click on ITX source files, MMS, MTT and MSD, allowing you to version check them to see which version you can open them with. Highlighted in green you can see some of the registry changes I make to make the MMS work, and in red two of the scripts that I'm calling source file check and source file check sub. In blue I have my .dat file which has details of each version in plain text as well as the directory that you will find that version in. So let's start with a demonstration of what these changes can do. As you can see I have my file explorer open here and I have one map source file test.mms and if I right click on this I have a new menu option ver check and it will open a window and will check each one of my ITX versions in turn until it finds a version that can open this file and in this case it's telling me that I need to run Design Studio 10.1.1 to open this file. Let's pick another example. Here we've got temp.mms, if I right click and choose vercheck, this is telling me that ITX9 can open this file. OK, so how does all this work? If I go into my registry editor and I drill down through hkey classes root to the IBM section, we will find some entries that start with IBM WebSphere Transformation Extender and there's one entry for each of the file extensions that you will find with the Design Studio. For this demonstration I'm going to be concentrating on MMS. Earlier versions had the keyword IBM WebSphere Transformation Extender. Newer versions might have the keywords IBM Sterling Transformation Extender. So I've done the changes in both. You may only need to do the changes in one. The .reg file that I supplied will do the changes in both. So let's expand and see what we've got. Underneath transformationextender.mms we have shell and then under that I've created a new key called vercheck and then within that a key called command and then within that there is a default entry and I've populated that with the name of a script that I've created c colon backslash ibm backslash itx source file version check dot cmd and then a space and then in double quotes percent one. What this will do is every time an MMS file is right clicked vercheck is available on the menu and then if you click on vercheck it will run this script and pass in the name of the MMS file that you've clicked on as the first parameter. This script and the subscript that it calls are both available in the zip file found in the notes section of this video. Let's go and have a look at those scripts. In my IBM directory I have ITX source file version check. We'll have a look at the content of that. The first line changes the current directory to the drive and path of the script that you've just called. So this is basically going to change to C colon backslash IBM for me. This line then reads a file called ITX source file version check dot dat and then for every line in that it's going to call a subroutine ITX source file version sub and then pass in the original MMS that you clicked on percent one and it's also going to pass in the two variables in that file that are separated with a comma. I'm going to open that file now. Here's my dat file. On my computer I have five Design Studio versions installed. The first entry on each line is the pretty name that I want to refer to. So here we've got 9.0.0 and then the directory that that is found in. 
Now my directories are actually shortcuts that point to real directories. I could put the real directories in this file instead. And these real directories are the defaults that the product uses. OK, so for each entry in that dat file, it's going to be calling this subroutine. Let's open the subroutine. The first thing the subroutine is going to do is change to the drive and directory temporarily where the MMS file resides. It's then going to print on screen which version it's checking. And percent %2 is the pretty version of the version that was in that .dat file. So it will first time this is called, it will show 9.0.0. Then the second time it's called, it will show 10.1.0, etc. And then once it's printed on screen which one it's checking, here's the actual check. It is going to use the third argument, which is the actual directory that the product is installed in, call the mexport command, which is map export, and the final argument is the name and extension of the MMS file that is passed in as the first argument. Now this entire lot is passed to null, so nothing is printed on screen, but essentially the error level is set. So if this is successful, error level is set to zero, and this if check in the next line, if error level equals zero, it then echoes which version can open this file. It also does a quick pause and then exits the script after you've pressed any key. This last line does actually change back to the original directory. It is the opposite of the push D at the beginning. This is called five times, first time with 9.0.0 and subsequently all the other versions. And then as soon as one of the versions can open the file, it prints that it can open the file, does a pause, waits for you to press the screen after reading the information and then exits. So these two scripts are currently set up to do MMS files. We can further enhance this process by having them deal with other types of files as well. So far the script I've been using has been concentrating on the MMS file. Here on screen you will find an enhanced version of the check sub command where it will check to see whether you are clicking on an MMS or an MTT or an MSD and set prog ID variable appropriately, either mexport, txport or msd export. It will then do the same lines that the previous version of the script were doing after checking that the prog ID is not empty. So it's got to be set to anything other than blank and it does the push D, informs you that it's doing the check. Here's the check itself and as you can see I'm using prog ID in place of the hard-coded mexport and we've still got the same error level check the information that tells you which version can open the file and the pause. Let's show you that working. I'm opening the type trees directory of one of the supply chain packs and if I right click any type tree I've got vercheck and as you can see this particular type tree can be opened by ITX 1010. It's already checked ITX 9 and ITX 9 could not read it. Let's go with a map next. Let's right click CCEDF and Vercheck. And as you can see, this particular map source file can be opened with 1011 at the earliest. 9 will not open it and 1010 will not open it. I hope you see the value of this set of scripts, registry changes, to enable you to more easily identify which version it is likely that a source file was created with. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Perhaps leave me a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.